How you guys doing? I'm Chris Ignato, and thanks for stopping by my channel. Now, I want to talk to you about a fire piston I've got and what an awesome piece of technology it is. I've wanted one of these for years, and I couldn't afford one because they're all like $70 and up. Some of them are cheaper, but not by much. Um, in fact, the cheaper ones are often made out of like Pyrex and things like that, and I want one that looks primitive. These were developed uh, a few centuries ago by people in the Pacific Islands and Southeast Asia. And it's a really awesome piece of technology. It's basically internal combustion or fire from compressed air. Okay? It gets so hot when you compress it that it heats up the surroundings. Now, the one I've got is really awesome. Now, this is my fire piston, and I got this from firepistons.com. Okay? This guy, Mike M., he makes some really, really cool fire pistons. This is hickory with, of course, a metal piston and cylinder inside. Like I said, a lot of them are um, Pyrex and stuff like that. If you want to get a really expensive one, they're made out of bone, okay? And the Islanders make them out of wood. And they're little gaskets. They use uh, cordage. Or in, in some cases, they use sinew. So that's really impressive stuff. And then a little bit of water for lubricant. I'm using a little bit of uh, petroleum jelly. <laughs> which is what we use on the modern ones. And as I said, it, this particular one looks... Now, this particular one is all hickory uh, on the outside, hickory handle and hickory cylinder, um, and it's got a metal piston, and the inside is metal. <laughs> one of the reasons why I love it so much, because if you, feel, if you want to find another one at all like this by somebody else, you could be paying $50, $60, 70 for it, Okay. This is really cool. Now, really quick, let me show you how it works, and then I'll talk a bit more about it. Right now, I've got a little bit of char cloth on the inside, okay? I've got a little bit of char cloth right in here. See that? And this is my cylinder. So I'm going to put this in here, and I'm going to lay this on the ground, and I'm going to compress it. You can use your hand and slap it, but my that'll hurt my wrists because I have a bit of carpal tunnel. So let me show you real quick. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of char cloth, fluff it up a little bit because it's been compressed in my backpack. My hands are a little bit moist from the snow. That's really not good. You want this as dry as possible. I'm going to place it into the little cup at the end of the uh, piston. Okay, now sometimes it takes a few attempts, so uh, let's give this a try. Now I'm going to take my tinder bundle and I drop this ember into it. So there you have it guys, you just saw me make fire from compressed air using a fire piston. Now as I said, um, this particular one at firepiston.com, I'll uh, include the link in the description below. And if you're in the market for a fire piston, I highly recommend you get the one from uh, Mike because these are, it's the most affordable one you're going to find. And it works really good. It takes a little bit of practice. Um, as you saw, I lay it on the ground and I compress it that way, or I lay it on the ground this way and I push it down. I'll show you again how it works before I finish the video, but uh, what an amazing piece of technology. So here's the, uh, the piston. 
it's all metal like I said. There's a little rubber gasket and then here's the cup where you put your char cloth or tinder fungus or char cotton. And this is the cylinder. So it fits in there very snugly, okay? There's like a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a thirty-second of an inch um, difference in the two. And that's what allows it to compress the air, okay? The air doesn't really escape. You compress it really fast. It superheats that air because it's being compressed and it gets really hot. Hot enough to ignite the tinder, if it's really dry, within that little cup or that little reservoir. It is so cool. But there are all sorts of others out there on the market. Um, I just don't think you'll find one for the price that Mike's charging. Really great product. It's a lot of fun. Now, there are plenty of times people might ask, why do you have that? You don't need that. You could just use a lighter. Of course you can. You know, same thing with hand drill or fire bow and things like that. It's the concept and the feeling of satisfaction and uh, the connection we get with our primitive ancestors that's the rewarding part. Plus, knowing that you can make these things, you know, on your own if you really had to. This isn't perhaps quite as practical as, say, a fire bow, but it's a really awesome piece of technology. It's a great thing to add to your repertoire. It's a lot of fun. People get really excited when they see you make fire using a piston. And as I said, it's an extremely impressive piece of primitive technology. The fact that those islanders came up with this 300 years ago is really impressive. So let me do that one more time a lot closer so you can see it in action once again. As I said, there are a lot of ones made out of Pyrex and stuff like that where they're clear and you can actually see the combustion occur, but you have to be in the dark when you do it. You're not going to see it outside like this. Uh, I like this wooden look myself. Now some people say these things don't work. You just have to get the finesse. You just got to practice, okay? It takes several attempts. Uh, before you kind of get the hang of it and you got to really make sure your tinder is bone dry Okay, you got to make sure the stuff is really dry when you do it I've done it with as I said tinder fungus char cloth and char cotton. I've managed to get successful coals on all three of those mediums Oh, I got snow in it Also, just to let you know, if you do purchase one of these from FirePiston.com, uh, it comes with two extra O-rings, it comes with a bit of char cotton, I believe, and uh, the product itself, and a, small, and a small piece of paper with instructions and his logo, okay? I keep this in my backpack. The instructions are in the back, and it also says... The user assumes all risk and responsibility. Always use under adult supervision. I concur with that. Don't practice any of the things I talk about without an adult around. And if you're practicing with fire, make sure you have a bottle of water or something to extinguish the fire. Okay? Now, I have to tell you, if I include the link below, um, that I might be affiliated with FirePiston.com. I might make a small commission that would help me a lot. Plus, it would help Mike out a lot. Uh, I just want you to know that. I'd really appreciate it. But you can buy one anywhere else you know I'm not telling you where to buy it really cool stuff fire pistons I'll probably talk more about these in the future thanks a lot for watching once again I'm Chris Ignato signing out